You had picked the Yankees to win the World Series. Michael did. I did. We felt that this team was just ready, and it really just came down to the offense, right? I mean, we can blame the pitching all we want. Anavito did not look good coming out of the bullpen, but is this squarely on the shoulders of the inability to get the big hit when they needed it? Yes and no, Don, and this, and I'm hedging my answer. This is why the Astros didn't hit with runners in scoring position either, and so if the Astros hit at all with runners in scoring position, we'd be talking about how both teams just bludgeoned each other to death, and whoever could hit the best won the series, right? So, so the Yankees, you can look at the team right now and say, hey, you guys didn't get hits with runners in scoring position. Well, neither did the Astros. So what I look at, I take a step back. And I say, who had the better team? Who had the better roster? And the better roster is the, is the Astros. It just is. Their one and two starters are better than the Yankees' one and two starters. Their one through five lineup is better, more consistent than the Yankees' one through five lineup. You can cherry pick some stats out of the ALCS and say, I'm going to put it on the Yankees. But the fact of the matter is, is the Astros were the better team all season long, and they were the better team in the ALCS. And so... I think there is one player on out of the 50 guys that played in the ALCS that tipped the scales, and that's Garrett Cole. If Garrett Cole was not on the Astros, I think the Yankees win that series. Now, I'm not even saying he's on the Yankees. Forget that. If, if Garrett Cole played for the Angels or played for the Mariners or someone that wasn't in the playoffs, the Yankees were a better team. And so, so my argument for this offseason is, and everyone's going to say, you got to sign this, got to sign that. As long as the Astros don't sign Garrett Cole next year, which is probably, a you know, a, there's a good chance he's going either to the Dodgers or the Angels or someone that's going to give him a boatload of money, I think the, the Yankees still have a better team. Next year than, than the Astros, they will have a better run. Well, the, here's my problem, I, and I'm all in on the analytics. I understand the value of it. But one thing that the Yankees do that the Astros don't do, the Yankees strike out way too much. And the Astros have almost the same amount of offensive production, and they strike out the least of any team. So I just don't think it's, it's a recipe for success, Mark, to have 600 strikeouts in the middle of your order. I just don't think that works. That, that's, a, that's a very fair assessment, Michael, and, and I'm not going to disagree with you there. So what I think you need to do if you're the Yankees this offseason even if you bring back the same basic team, you know, I would definitely sign Gardner and Gregorius. I'm, I'm, you don't have any lefty. If you, if you don't re-sign those guys, there's not a lot of left-handed studs out there on the free agent market. You know, you got, you, you got Grandal, um, who I don't think is a fit because of Sanchez. You've got Moustakis that, because of his position, I don't think there's a fit. And so I'd bring back Gardner and Gregorius. The thing is, you have to understand that there's going to be strikeouts in your lineup, and you need to split those strikeouts up. You can't have three guys in a row that are all going to strike out in an inning and, and, and not put up competitive at-bats. Every third guy, if he's a strikeout guy, listen, Stan's going to strike out. Sanchez is going to strike out. You know, Judge um, is going to strike out. Judge is going to strike out. Yeah, those guys are going to K. That's just the way that they're built and can you teach them to, to you know, uh, cut down their swing a little bit with two strikes? Yeah, you can, but you're also taking away their strength. I just think the lineup construction needs to be looked at, and I think you have to, to understand that there's going to be hot streaks and cold streaks on this team, and the way to mitigate a hot streak and a cold streak is to have a little better pitching and a little bit more balance in that lineup. Would you move forward? I know it's going to be a very difficult thing, and you said the Yankees could come back the way they are and still be – the best team if, if Cole signs somewhere else. And I heard, I've heard when I was during the ALCS, the Astros have no intention of paying him that kind of money. They, they knew that when they acquired him. But that being said, should the Yankees do anything possible to try and move Stanton, or should they move forward with Stanton as part of it? How are you going to move that? Get, getting You're going to have to eat a lot of it. You're going to have to eat a ton. And here's the thing. For me, you make Stanton your full-time DH. You protect his legs. It is, it is very difficult. A, a, a power hitter who's a timing hitter, you can, you can obviously tell he's a timing hitter. When he's hot, man, he is an absolute stud. When he's not, it, it's ugly. I mean, it happens. And in the you know, second half of my career, I was kind of the same way. I mean, when I'm hot, I'm good. When it's not, it's, you know, it's tough to get hits. But if you put Stanton as your, as your full-time DH and say you protect your legs, 
You lock in your approach. It might take you a month to, to become a really comfortable everyday DH, but that you got a lot of years and a lot of dollars left on that contract. I would rather try to make Stanton work than either sell him low or keep running him out to the outfield and keep getting hurt. Do you go after Cole? Absolutely you do. Now, Cash has been very disciplined in his free agency over the past few years. He got burned a little bit with, um, you know, with the, uh, the Ellsbury contract. That, you know, other than that, you haven't made the huge splashes, right? If they went out and got Cole, they have to understand they're going to overpay because the analytics are going to tell him he's worth X. But let me tell you something. If X is equal in New York and L.A., Cole's going to L.A. It's just the way it is. So he, the Yankees are going to have to overpay. If they don't, if they decide they're not going to go with Cole, they have to live with that and, and basically – Roll into 2020 saying it's the same team we got. We just expect but, different results in the playoffs. But if you're going to go with the whole philosophy of I don't want them going through the third time through the order, like they took to knock out in game one after throwing 68 pitches through six innings, you don't do that with Cole. Like, is that philosophy because it's Tanaka, but they wouldn't do that with Cole? Because if they're going to do that with Cole, then why spend all that money on him? Why, why would I spend I, all that money on a guy that's going to pitch five, six innings in a big spot? They're not going to do that. And Don, you bring up a really good point about the entire philosophy. I'm not a huge proponent. I know what the numbers say. But if, if Tanaka is dealing, if Paxton is dealing, if Sevy's dealing, those are three top starters. I mean, it, those guys being healthy, if all things equal, that's a really good one through three. I'll put that one through three against most rotations in baseball. You should let those guys, when they're hot, go through the third time in the order. If they're struggling, if they're laboring the first two times through the order, yeah, you get them out. But, you know, Zach Britton, I give him a lot of credit for being honest. The starting pitching is still the way to go. It, it is almost impossible to go through three rounds of a postseason, five games and then two seven-game series, throwing the majority of your innings with bullpen guys. I, I just don't see it's never been done before, and I don't see you winning a World Series that way. You know, you, you, Don brought up the 68 pitch, six innings uh, that Tadaka had, and he was taken out at the time we raised our eyebrows. And it was interesting because Aaron Boone said, well, he was done. It wasn't, it wasn't an analytic move. And I wonder now that we find out today that he had loose bodies removed from his elbow, maybe they were nursing him through the postseason. Maybe he wasn't feeling great. You're right, and that's why I always tell you guys, we never know from an injury standpoint. And we usually talk about it more at the Mets with kind of the stuff that's been going on the last few years. But when a guy gets pulled and we, we yell at Mickey Callaway and we yell at Aaron Boone and go, why would you do that? You never know what's going on behind the scenes. And so rather than jumping to conclusions and, and putting it all on the manager or, or saying, why, these, these idiots, why are they doing this? Let's just take a step back and understand that it's a physical game. And if physically, if the training staff and the coaching staff doesn't believe that this player can get through the next inning or two, then you got to take him out of the game. So I, I, I'm cautiously optimistic about all of the injuries, about Voight, about Hicks, about Tanaka. That being said, I think the Yankees go into next season the same way they went into to this year with, I'm going to have a 25-man roster. I mean, and, and by the way, I'm going to have reinforcements at AAA. Because I'm going to need everybody with the amount of injuries that are in the game today.